Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's great to see some of you join us. And we're, I know many of you are going to continue to join us for the next few minutes. But um, just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Mauricio Vera, Assistant National Director of the Veteran Institute for Procurement. I want to welcome you to session number three of VIP's Continued Education Workshop. Um, this workshop was developed to give veteran business owners the opportunity to take a deeper dive on relevant market topics. Uh, this workshop theme is how to identify relevant opportunities and develop an effective pipeline, which uh, these are of course very important steps that you should take in helping you grow your business. Um, this workshop is brought to you by the Veteran Institute for Procurement in partnership with the Small Business Administration and the Veterans Business Outreach Center and was developed to help veteran businesses accelerate growth in the federal marketplace. Uh, and now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker for the day, and that's Ms. Judy Bratt, who is the uh, CEO of Summit Insight. And she brings over uh, 35 years of, ex of ex expertise in federal business development and strategy to people who want to grow their federal business. She's, going, she's an award-winning author, speaker, and consultant, as you can see there on the slide. Um, and this is gonna be an interactive session, uh, hands-on. Uh, so while Judy shows us how to use SAM contract data to identify opportunities, when you have a question, please use the hand raise feature in your Zoom toolbar, and I will call on you to unmute and ask your question. Uh, also, please note, that the slides and video recording from today's session will be emailed to you afterwards. Uh, and now, once again, it's a great pleasure to introduce Judy. Judy, it's all yours. Mauricio, thank you. And my veterans, thank you so much for, for serving all of us. It is my joy and my pleasure and my honor to serve you today. Here's what we're gonna do today. You'll learn how to define your federal contract research goals which data fields are the most valuable for opportunity identification, how to create the recommended storyboard field selection for a comprehensive market, uh, market ad hoc report. You learn the steps to export your data to Excel, how to create pivot tables of your data and how to use the resulting data views to identify leads, partners, competitors, acquisition strategies and generate opportunities for engagement of business. Sound good? If it does, Smile, wave, thumbs up in the chat. Love to get lots of activity in the chat today. If this is what you came for, you're in the right place. If you're looking for the flight to Seattle, this is a perfect time to disembark. And with that, recommended prerequisites for this session. Important if you are either attending live or you're seeing this in a recording. I'd recommended that you review your knowledge or previous participation in the federal buyer players and layers. I recommended that you have completed or have reviewed someone else's material of the VIP start session called, that I delivered called Finding Procurement Opportunities. I recommended that if you're here, you've already completed the SAM.gov video trainings on working with ad hoc and that you have had some, you've jumped in and played around and gotten stuck, but you've had some experience in creating and running your own ad hoc reports. I would like you to please Put in the chat right now, numbers one, two, three, and four, which of these things you personally have done. That's going to let me level set. So if you would enter in the chat, which of these prerequisites have you completed? You're all still welcome, but this will give me an idea of where I might need to stop and slow down a little bit and go back. And I welcome your real-time uh, questions and situations as well so that we can work with them. There's going to be nothing perfect about what we're doing. I will stop and stagger and start again and um, have a very, very similar experience to what happens in real life, in part because while I have been working with this data really from back in the days when it was published in hard copy, um, I'm not necessarily in there as, as a data dumpster diving diva every day, which means that um, I'm going to start and stop and it'll, it'll be imperfect and it'll probably feel real familiar. So I'm looking in the chat to see, and lots of folks have done VIP start. Thanks for putting a little bit of your experience in here. Thank you. This is awesome. Okay. We're all over the place. Great. So we want to discover how and why to, to select the data fields and attributes that are the most useful for federal business strategy. Learn how to read your data to reveal competitors and partners. See the patterns 
that identify your best leads and opportunities before those are published anywhere and focus your sales efforts with greater confidence and start compelling conversations with the right people a lot sooner. Aaron has put into the chat files for you. And so you'll have the opportunity to download the chat at the end. And I may refer to those files or ask Aaron to repost one of the files if we're gonna work with one of them live. So here we go. The big transformation that happens for those people who are successful in the federal arena, and certainly my big focus when I work with clients is this, data can show you the, uh, the answer to the question, what can I bid? Sam.gov contract opportunities can show you the answer to what can I bid? If you take that data and turn it into intelligence, you can discover who is my buyer? Who is my buyer and how do they behave? And that changes everything. 80% of the people who are in the federal market are scrolling through opportunities that look perfect and making proposals to people who have never heard of them in the hope that something will stick or someone will remember them. That's much akin to running across a crowded room amongst a group of people that you've never met before because you've seen the perfect person you want to marry going down on one knee before you've ever had a conversation and holding up the hardware and saying, marry me. Would you do that? Of course not. But writing proposals to people who have never heard of you should make you cringe almost as much because that's really the same, the same experience. Your federal buyer is not just one person. There are players at five layers who can help or hinder you in your quest to win federal business. And I won't belabor it, here are the five. Small business specialist, people at the contracting layer, people at the end user layer, a very juicy layer where there's lots of people who are stuck with the consequences of choosing you and have a lot to say, especially if you talk to them before proposals or RFPs hit the street. Industry, competitors, competimates. And you may occasionally run into a stakeholder that's a CIO, a um, cabinet secretary, a base commander. You can make the distinction between a stakeholder and everybody else because the stakeholder is basically not in the room when somebody chooses you. Their priorities, their allocation of budgets, their determination of the mission, their accountability for the mission on the front page of the New York Times, all of those things land on them, but they're not in the food chain of deciding who, who they're going to choose for, for a contractor. Finding and engaging the right way with, all the, uh, with the players at all the layers can help you. Contract data cycle. Here's why we're looking at data in agencies. You know, Congress approves money, agencies publish procurement forecasts, the next session, the requirements become defined, competitive field narrows, set aside, potentials evaluated, then the door doors all close up and there's a little window for solicitation, RFP and competition, door closes, contract award and or protest and contract performance. And so of all of these things, folks make the mistake of starting with the forecast to go forward, look back. This is why we're here. Answering the question, who buys what I do and how do they buy, how much do they buy, who they buy from is what data can tell us and why I get genuinely excited about it because some of the opportunities that we most want to get started with are ones we're gonna create ourselves in conversation with our buyers and prospects. Conversations start here. Contract data gives you a competitive advantage and helps you identify who are the people in these four roles, the ones you're going to need to have conversations with, and the really heavy duty ones um, that are um, really critical are the folks in the contracting layer, because they have the authority that the president of the United States does not have, the authority to bind your company, you and your company, to performing services or providing products. And industry, they may be teaming with you, they may be competing with you, or both often. And so you're going to actually find the 
names or full or partial names or clues right in the data for who's in the contracting layer and who's in the industry layer. Now, can you imagine somebody being in contract administration and not knowing and, and not knowing who the small business specialist is? That small business is leaning over their small well, business specialist. More you see, are they not leaning over the shoulder in contracts saying, have you set that aside for small business? Why haven't you set that aside for small business? So you better believe the people in the contracting layer know who the small business specialist is if you haven't found them yet. And industry, who they award the contract to, that's right in the data. Can you imagine the people who are administering the contract not knowing who it is that has asked them to go and run the competition? Of course not. They know those things as well. So the data gives you what you need with moderate, entirely doable detective work to ferret out who are the players at all your layers. And it starts here, which is why I get so excited about it. Who here? Um, I want you to drop the word me in the chat if you have experimented with or explored or gotten hands on with the federal procurement data system where we're not going today, but put me in the chat if you have played with FPDS in any way. And while you do that, thank you. This is really super helpful. We're not gonna go back through it. There are 208 contract data fields that some lucky person in the contract shop gets to enter every single time a contract is awarded or a contract is amended or a contract is set up. The federal procurement data system is still the place where they input the data, but it is no longer the place from which data is extracted. Federal procurement data system can be helpful if you want to do a quick look on a keyword or um, a term, NAICS code, company name, and it will spit out 26 data fields, but just 26. And sometimes, and I do this all the time when somebody calls me up or has set up an appointment with me and I wanna know, hey, how are they doing anyway? And I can sort by contract award. I can real quick subtotal by year and I can see before we even have a conversation whether your federal sales has been growing or you've had some roller coaster stuff. Um, and that's helpful. If somebody calls on me, I have a lot more time for somebody who's taken the time to get to know what's been happening with me and my company and knows what I do than somebody who's just calling up to sell me something and has never heard of me. I'll bet you feel the same way. You better believe your federal buyer does too. And so they've spent countless hours putting all this stuff into the system. They feel so gratified to realize, hey, you looked at our stuff. You know what's going on with us. So federal procurement data system, uh, you can export to Excel a little bit of what you find there, but you're only getting a little over 10% of the data that somebody's made available. Everybody see why FPDS just going into the front end is not an ideal place to be. Okay. Uh, right. Lots of FPDS fans. All right, super. Now, federal contract data tells you a story. It tells you who buys what we do where the work will be done, when the contract will be complete, how the buyer described the purchase in letters and words and numbers, who they bought from, and how much they spent. If you haven't taken the time to figure this out and to read that data, you better believe your competition has. So now you're going to be able to do this today and be on a start. And it's a long learning curve but you'll be on the, on the road to knowing how to do it. Again, if you've got questions or situations as you go along, put them in the chat so Mauricio can get it to me. You'll be able to see when you're using SAM.gov data who authorized the purchase, as well as how many offers they received and how the contract was awarded, which helps us make business decisions. You, when you're reading the data correctly, you can make a confident decision about which agencies or offices are our best prospects. You are seasoned VIPs, so you know, basically focus or go broke. And so even if every single federal department and agency, Bob, I'm talking to you, needs what you do, making a confident choice and focusing your outbound efforts on no more than three or four federal departments or agencies is going to serve you well and keep you profitable and put you on the fast track to the win. 
you'll be able to see where the buyers are located. There's even though we do so much business online now, you'll still be able to focus on folks that are close to you or are in your backyard or are physically located close to places where you're already doing business or traveling frequently anyway. You'll be able to get a sense of when should we approach them? How much lead time is there before they might be buying something like that again? How easy can we make it for them to buy? That's understanding how they do business now. What's their easy button? The data will show that to you. How much competition should we expect? You'll be able to see which kinds of purchases really have so few offers that that's reflecting a relationship sell. Who might we need to team with? Lots of folks need to team. And there's lots of you who don't need to team, but you'll want to know who's in your backyard. Who are they already in love with? who's probably going to be top of mind when they're thinking of buying things like what we do again. And again, players and layers, who's involved in choosing the suppliers so we know who to get in front of. All of this is in the data, which is why we do this. Sam.gov contract data is not pretty, but it does work. I want to invite, and so I want to invite you to go in there and I'm, I'm going to do the same, to log in and go to ad hoc award IDV, advanced data. All right. There are total 208 fields that contract officials enter in that contract award data. And I'm going to take a look at which fields to work with, how to see a pattern of leads there, and how to find and engage the right players at all the right layers. So I'm going to look at some real examples in this data. SAM.gov contract award data tells a story in nine questions. And so the, the way that I do it, the, when you're setting up a query, you're selecting data points. I'm going to switch screens now. Hold one. And let's see if it's kicked me out yet or not. That's always fun. And sure enough, a second. Continue. Please continue. All right. Mauricio, can you see SAM.gov on my screen? Yes. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do the thing. All right, and I encourage you to open another browser window and follow along if you can. You will need to have logged in. You'll need to have logged in to SAM.gov in order to do this, okay? So with that, all right, you're gonna go into contract data. And remember I had um, encouraged you to do the full class on contract data reports. This is where that is. Not gonna go in there right now, but this total is about 60 minutes of chunky little videos, very helpful, okay? And intermediate and advanced topics, all right? Now, in contract data, then when I go in, I'm going to go down to ad hoc Reports. There's a reference guide, by the way, which if you want to know what are all of these fields, what is the data that I'm looking at? What's this stuff mean? That reference guide is what you want to look at. But I'm going to go to ad hoc reports themselves. And sometimes it kicks you out. So I'm going to try it again. This happens. It just happens. Ad hoc reports. And let's try it again. Which is why ad hoc reports, da 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 da, da, da and ad hoc. Okay. Um, it thinks I am not signed in, so I have to apparently sign in again. That might be why. This happens. All right, here we go. Too much fun. And my code 533415. Three, 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 four, one. Okay. No big deal. There we go. All right, let's try that again. Ad hoc reports then. So um, if I go, I go into the front end of SAM. All right, so this is what the workflow is. If I mean, I go to contract data, go to ad hoc reports. Excuse me, Judy, let me, 
let yeah. me interrupt you while you're doing this because I do have a question in the chat about yeah. about well, are they going to get the slides of how to yes. how to go where you're going right now? Ah, uh, you should. Um, I have a workflow. I have a flow about how mm -hmm. to. I don't know whether I have the entire flow about how to log in, but this is on a, a this is on a video recording, so you'll have this on the recording. Okay, that's okay. right. Thank you. Alrighty. So we go to, and all the process of doing this, I definitely have on a separate set of slides, okay? And so when you go to create a, an ad hoc report, it's like if you're going fishing and you're gonna weave a net and you wanna weave a net to get specific kinds of data and specific kinds of fish and only those kinds of fish. You don't wanna trap dolphins, you don't wanna trap turtles, but you wanna get exactly the kind of fish that you want. So building a query lets you consistently go get just the fields of data that you want and in the order that you want them. All right. And so when you do that, I'm going to go and just stagger my way through doing this because I don't do this every day. Basically, you build this once and then you can just run it. But building it the first time is a bit of a bear. And the uh, that's why the education videos that um, Sam the, that that um, ad hoc provides shows you how to do this. So I'm going to try to do this as a blank report. Excuse me, Judy. To... Yep. I do have a question in the yep. chat um, from Mark. Uh, he says he went to FPDS and it said reports in SAM.gov. So can That's you explain? Where we are. Okay. Can you explain the crux of the 26 fields for value? I will. Of... Okay. Okay. If you yeah. um, if you do, I'll I'll show you if you'd like to see it. Okay. Sounds like Mark. Somebody wants to know what do you get out of FPDS. So I I will tell you. Okay. So let's say I go to FPDS and I search on the word cyber just for fun, okay? Well, great. There's 49,838 records, great. And so let's say I say, I wanna look at all of these things. I wanna go and sort it by date signed, fine. And then I'm gonna export it. You can still see my screen, right? I'm gonna export it to CSV. Great. When I do that, it's going to take me a minute here. Let's see if it wants to talk to me. It might or might not. Export data as CSV. Let's try it again. Thanks for doing this, Judy, because it, it's always been elusive to me. Okay, no worries. I get it. Got your back. Now, I'm trying this again. I'm asking it to export. Okay, and so I'm just going to... Sometimes it takes a minute. So if you wanted it, then I'm all about doing it. But sometimes it can take a minute. And let's see. All right, I'm going to do... I'm going to go back out and try it one more time, okay? So date signed, there you go. And now export to CSV. Let's try this again. I'm gonna see whether or not it hit my download file. It might have gone there without talking to me. Doubt it, but nope. So this morning it is busy not talking to me. Um, what I will do is show you an example of another file that goes what it looks like, okay? Would you like to see that, what, what you get and what you don't get? Is that really your question? Okay, I'm all about it. Hang on for just a second. That's fine. Let me go get one. And just when I think I'd saved examples of everything you could possibly want. Um, one second. I'll show you an example of one that is a little prettier. Um, because, uh, and I'll show you an example of an analysis that I do when I just pull a file before I talk to somebody. One second here. And yeah, all righty. So one second. And all right. So this is a slightly prettier file. Okay. But these are the fields that you get when you export from 
FPDS, contract ID, reference IDV, modification, transaction, award type, money, award date, what it was, unique entity, cage code, 26 fields, that's it, 26 fields. There are 208 fields that they gathered. And what's not here, no created by, no approved by, no modified by, no humans. Humans are very helpful because there's no such thing as doing business with the government. There's only doing business with people. Mark, does that help? Now I'm gonna show you the difference of what you get and what you can get um, by dropping back to our friends in sam.gov. Here we go. One second. Yes, I mean, definitely, Judy, it is helpful. I just knew that everybody of like the old school was like, oh, FPDS, FPDS, you know, they were how fantastic. And it has a lot of data, and but those of us that grew up, create your sam.gov account, have no knowledge of the FPDS. And um, I mean, I've gone there, like when I logged on, it's like, oh, it's been over a year since you've logged in. So, I mean, I had logged in in the past, but it's not something that's in my normal battle rhythm to check. Exactly. FPDS. And, yeah. um, and FPD, yeah, that's exactly right. So, and sam.gov contract data is now where um, civilian humans can, who are not contracting officers, this is where we have to go to get data now. Okay. And so well, I'm, I'm going to switch files here for a second. And this, these files are actually in rather than um, me messing around too much. This is a bonus file. It's screenshots for ad hoc query creation. So I don't trust myself to quite not make a mess. So I'm going to make, I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity to look pretty. And so you saw me go onto this screen, right? So these are all my past ad hoc report screens, but let's say I want to create a new report. So this is how it's done. Okay, go to blank report, go and throw in a date. You need to have what, um, what values you want to have for date signed and for last date modified. Okay, the start and finish dates. I encourage you to do at least two full past fiscal years plus the current one year to date. Okay, this is an important thing. You want to write this down. This is also in my recommendations and tips. All right. And so I picked 2019. So I get all 2019, all 2020, all 2021. Uh, so I, I wanted to do a deeper data dip than this. Okay. But you want to get at least two full fiscal years plus one more. Then it'll take you to from here, if you hit um, if if you hit edit and design mode, the next thing it'll take you to is a screen where it says, fine, now what do you want to have in your report? The only thing that's here is here are the dates. And so you're now going to drag some fields over. And this is where you select. For me, I select 62 or 63 fields. And I put them in an order that, that tells a story. And I'll give you the whole list of what fields I choose. So just relax and breathe here for a sec, OK? And so now I've added the date. You can see I changed that up at the top. You're looking in the top left-hand part of the screen now. And so there's something called a schema objects and public objects. Those are your fields. Under schema objects, this is where the attributes or the, not, the, the um, qualitative or the words, words and figures that aren't contract amounts are. So I'll go into here and it says it has batches of different information. Now I have something that I've dropped in on the right-hand side that is my list of the storyboard contract data fields. This is also um, a, a file that Aaron has put in the chat. So this is my reference. What fields am I gonna add here? Okay. And so I go over to, I've unfolded contracting department name. Um, once you're into, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So once you go into award IDV and this is create a report, this is where it takes you. Okay. And so it will, it will then ask you to go and just a sec. It'll ask you to choose some dates. And remember we talked about choosing at least full fiscal years of dates. And then you'll go to edit and design mode and you'll go to the next section.
this is the screen you're going to see. This is the screen you're going to see. And you're going to drag. This is the screen you'll see. And you'll go into, in the, on the left-hand side, you'll select schema objects. OK? Everybody follow so far. I need one person to just uh, go back and forth with me so I know you're with me. Erin or Mauricio? Yep. OK. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Whew. We got this. So we're going to go to schema objects and a whole menu of stuff is going to light up. So watch on the left side. So I've clicked on schema objects and it's going to open up attributes, bunches of stuff. So from here, I'm going to choose just about 60 different fields and I'm going to put them in a particular order. And so I'm going to open up the folder where these things are. And I'm going to drag them over to those gray boxes that you see in the middle. So the first kinds of questions I want to ask are, who did the purchase? And so that's department and agency information. So I'm going to open up that folder on the left. And there'll be a bunch of fields, about a half a dozen or so. And I'm going to drag over the information for, because I want to know the contracting department name, the agency name, the office name, the funding agency name. So I'm going to drag those four fields over. You see all these opened out? Contracting department name. I've dragged that over. Then I drag the next one, which is going to show up where the yellow line is. There it is. Contracting office name. So I'm building my report out. And the ad hoc video training will show you how to do this as well. And so I'm just going to do three for right now. But I would add all the other fields that answer all the questions. And then I want to know at the end of it, how much did they spend? How much was this transaction worth? And this is called base and all options value. Then there's base and, uh, sorry, there's base and exercised options value. And there's total dollars obligated. All three of these things are helpful to me. I want to know what, what did they spend this time? What's the total amount that they could spend using this contract? the total amount they have spent so far. And then what's the total amount that they could, could spend if they spend all the money that they had authorization for, okay? So, and when I'm done doing that, okay, when I'm done doing that, I can then filter. I can say, fine, based on all the information that I want, how do I wanna pull my data? And so the way that I wanna do that is using the field description of requirements. I like description of requirements because, and a lot of people search on NAICS codes, and the reason I don't do that is because a, your contracting officer gets to choose what the NAICS code is, North American Industrial Classification System code is, that they want to assign to the contract transaction for that contract. I don't know about you, but I can't read a contracting officer's mind, and they're required to assign one they might not necessarily pick the same one that you would. There might be five or six different choices they might have. And sometimes, Mauricio, tell me if this has ever happened to you or you knew anybody who ever did this. Sometimes someone might choose a NAICS code so that it's not necessarily one that everybody and their dog is going to find, but the people who know to look for it will know that this is coming. Have you ever heard of anybody who ever did that, Mauricio? I... Yes, I have. <laughs> you, you have heard of someone. I'm not asking if you have ever done this, but yeah. contracting yeah. officers need to see that justice has been done. They need to follow the rules. They need to create the opportunity for maximum practicable competition. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be easy for absolutely everybody either. It just, that's yeah. the way it works. They have a job to do and they want to get it done. And so... Description of requirements gets interesting because that is a field where it used to be that contracting officers could enter over 2,000 characters and write a story in there about what they were doing, and a lot of the time they did. Now they have 250 characters to describe what it is that they're buying, but there's often real gold in there, and by searching on description of requirements, you can then pull a whole big net full of data and then take a look at what are the NAICS codes and product service codes that somebody is using when they're buying something that they describe is what I do. 
This is a major mindset shift in the way people look at data. And so I use contains. And so for the purpose of my search, I say contains the word cyber. Description of requirement contains cyber. Okay. Excuse me, Judy. Um, yep. Some people are having problems getting to where you are. Um, okay. A couple of people said when clicking award.idv information report, they get yep. an error has occurred on okay. this page. Your project does not support this feature. Please update your report. Okay. Um, and sometimes if you have not signed into sam.gov for a long time and you haven't um you you may get locked it you may get locked out sometimes the system stalls okay um and sometimes federal service desk has to help help walk you through some of this okay um so i can't say for sure why a database not might not be working for you okay um i i don't have the answer to that i will say that in just about every uh, um, Apex Accelerator, formerly known as Procurement Technical Assistance Center, they have at least one person who knows this stuff even better, even better than I do, far better than I do. And so if you're able to go back to your PTAC and say, would you please get me an appointment? I want to get some appointment or some counseling with the top contract data specialist in your center. You should be able to get somebody who can walk you through hands-on with this, okay? This is why I had asked that if you're here, that you've at least tried to play around with this on your own before we get here. I would love to do this one-on-one -on -one with you. And I'm, um, this is, I, I can't tell you for sure why it is it's not working for you right now, okay? Mauricio, is that gonna let us at least move forward? Uh, I think so. Um... Okay. I'm sorry. somebody uh, somebody else is saying I can get to other transactional information but doesn't it doesn't have all the same field choices okay um well if you're going through I'm I'm, I'm backing out the steps and so once you've got past um your, your dates you've got award IDV information you go to schema objects it's going to give you choices for attributes you'll open that up and that's where the contract information is and that's where I'm pulling these data fields from when I get all the data fields that I want, then I pull the values and that's the public objects and that's the metrics. And so I create a report and that's where I'm going with this. When I wanna, so I've, I've now set up the report that I wanna run. I've picked the same fields. I wanna get the same fields all the time. I wanna get them in this order. And now I wanna actually go and fish for data. When I fish for data, I, Choose description of requirements, then it contains at least one, and I can do multiple keywords. Um, so this is where you're going to experiment a little bit. Maybe I want the word cyber. Maybe I want um, the, uh, if, if I'm doing cybersecurity, maybe I want the word attack. Maybe I, there may be two or three other terms that get used a lot when somebody's buying what I do. Okay. Maybe there, I want simulation in there. Okay, so you cast a broad net and then you export to Excel and then you filter it down. And so I've got my description of requirements contain cyber. And then I want to make sure that I've got, got this set up so that it gives you one date or the other and the description has to contain cyber. So I change it from or to and. And I name my report, I save it. And then I go to run it and I'm going to export this thing. So this is my sample, my little tiny sample report that just has three fields and then the dollars. Okay. And so that's the, the one example. I'm going to go back to the other PowerPoint. All right. Cause I'm going to show you what happens once we export this thing. Okay. Hang on for just a second. Away we go. The, the fields that I choose when I do the full when I do the full storyboard, one second. There we go. Hey, Judy, really quick, as you're doing the export, like when you yep. were putting in those um, search buys, that's yep. kind of like the key words. Like if I it was is. a contracting yes. officer, how they find us. But now we're trying to find things about, you know, opportunities or, you know, some historical stuff, right? We're trying to, you know, narrow our, you know, searching. So 
that's kind of what that was and that's going to sort yes. it by that right okay. that's exactly that's right good. so a lot of the time i got uh, we we logged on and off a bunch of times so i kind of lost my flow so a lot of the time the people who are searching for whether you're searching for an opportunity or you're searching for information about buyers um people have developed it's very common to search by NAICS code or possibly product service code and you can miss a lot of op a lot of data if you um that you might otherwise find if you do your search pull your data based on terms that show up keywords that somebody would use to describe what you do or describe what a competitor does if they didn't if they'd never heard of you and so those words are going to show up in the description of requirements field. I'm going to show you in a second what happens, the kinds of stuff that people put in there. I've grouped the, the fields. Okay, so the first four fields, who's the buyer? The um, second three fields, where will the work be done? The third set of fields I use, who's, the con who's in the contracting office? And that approved by is almost certainly the contracting officer, the one who has the legal authority to award the contract. Then when did the work start and end? Date signed and estimate ultimate completion date. That's a very powerful field because that's going to give you a sense of when's this contract up. So you can work backwards maybe 12 or 18 months and go, let's build some relationships more than a year before the current contract is going to be running out. Then the information about how did the buyer buy? And we're going to look at these fields in a second. And then what did they buy? How much might they spend? Who did they buy from? And what do we know about who they bought from? So these two slides, slide 16 and 17, give you the full selection of fields that I use when I do a data pull for competitive intelligence, okay? And so when you're building your report, you can, use, you can choose these fields and in this order. So this is where you're going, okay? So this is what the, the, what the screen looks like when you've pulled out all 65 of these fields, or all 63 of these fields, okay? And so tips, we talked about capturing the last two full years or more, plus year to date of contract data. You're gonna experiment for an optimal keyword combination. And so I just use cyber here. Sometimes I'll work with a client, we'll choose experiment, and maybe one term that you think is great, nothing's coming up. Other ones, you might be using the word engineering, but that is ship engineering and IT engineering and human capital engineering. You're going to have to, you're going to get a whole lot of stuff you don't want. You can filter that out using appropriate NAICS codes once you pull the data out. And I'll show you some of the, how that works. So you want to cast a wide net export and then filter in spreadsheet form. And so I've um, given um, Aaron the screenshot of the series of report creations. The attribute selection for running your query. I want to strongly encourage you to do that using the description of requirements field and a combination of keywords in your query to capture the full picture of what's happening in your market. And so include your search terms in your file name and export it to CSV without headers. And that'll give you the chance to format and filter the data after export. I'm going to show you some of what that looks like. Okay, so I've got several different pieces, several different windows here. So I'm going to go get one of those here for you. Hang on a second. And switch windows. All right. And so those are your fields. And one second. I have an example that is just the CSV file so you can see what it looks like when it comes out of the system. Okay, one second. And here we go. <laughs> I tried to have all of these open and it was crashing my machine. All right, so CSV and updated storyboard, all the fields sample. Okay. Um, okay. 
there's a set of steps that you use when you are putting this together. And so it looks like I've done this. And so I take the fields and light up the first row and light up the whole sheet, put a filter on it so that then I have my full story here and then I'll save it. It'll go out as in, uh, it'll come out, um, it, we export it as a CSV file and I'll save it as an Excel file, okay? So can you see the story then that's, that's unfolding? Remember to, uh, when we started, I think Mark, we talked about the difference between having 26 fields to work with and having 60, yes? Yes, no, totally. Okay. So here, then um, I can filter out. We're starting, Mauricio, with your home base, Agency for International Development. Um, how and about that? <laughs> how about that? And so here, something to keep in mind, place of performance, sometimes the contracting officer will enter as place of performance, the place where the vendor is, not where the work will be done. So you need to cross check that and realize that some uh, that sometimes if you see that the work the place of performance is listed as the same place as the vendor is that um you're going to have to do do some more digging to find out more about where the work is actually being done so be aware that these three things don't always tell you where the work is being done okay the thing i love is approved by modified by prepared by these three fields, and you take a look at the way these are laid out. And sometimes, so if the person who modified the record or prepared it and entered it, that might not be the contracting officer, but you better believe they're not working too far away. Now you take a look at the way that these, what you're getting here, 00.f.andre.almazan at gsa.gov. That's not a working email address. But do you think you might be able to reach somebody if you tried to email Andre f.andre.amazon at gsa.gov, maybe. Okay. So it doesn't take a lot. You certainly can use either GSA staff directory or do some um, LinkedIn or internet searching to find out. In some of the other agencies, all you're getting are four numbers and what looks like a first initial and a last name. In here, Department of Labor looks like you've got a full working email address here. Now, Catherine A. Quinn, Catherine.a.quinn13.civ at mail.mil, maybe that had reached here. Uh, Catherine.davis.n65236, that's not going to be a working email address, but it's going to get you pretty close. Everybody see the, um, the kind of detective work that you can do to start to unpack who your humans are when you get here? Something to be aware of. Those of you who love USA spending, these three fields don't show up there. And these three fields are really critical to being able to figure out who your federal humans are. Estimated completion date. So you can just select estimated completion dates, contracts that are gonna be finishing this year and in the next two years, filter it down and say, just show me the stuff that's coming up that it, that's coming to a close within the next two years, for example. Okay, everybody see why that's useful. You can build relationships when there's some time, but not too much time and not too little time before the current contract finishes. Everybody good with that? Yeah, there's a unique identifier for the specific transaction. But if you wanna know, are they using contract vehicles and what contract vehicle are they using? This referenced IDV tells you the contract number of the contract vehicle itself. Stuff that, that star, starts 47Q, that's something that's coming out of GSA. You'll get to get to get familiar with read the data on this stuff. Stuff that starts with an FA, that's an Air Force IDIQ. Stuff that starts with a GSQ OAD, that's an OASIS contract. Some of these other ones that are GSA. These are GS06F. Those are going to be older GSA schedules. For example, it's GS35F, lots of GSA schedules. Then you can go down and see some of these other ones. HSHQ Homeland Security Headquarters, DC. They have their own contracts. 
N001780. That is Seaport NXG. So you can see what are the contract vehicles somebody's using, which helps you answer the question, do I need a GSA schedule? Do I need a different kind of vehicle? What, how is it that my buyers do their buying? Hey, Judy. Yeah. Excuse me, I have a question. So yeah. how do you know what those uh, acronyms, is there a legend somewhere where they can, you know, how did you, cause you know that some of them are Homeland Security or, or uh, GSA or whatever it is that, is there some place where they can actually be able to decipher that? I'm going to, Mauricio probably knows the faster answer to that than I do. When I do, I've, I've, I filter first by the agency. And then um, if, if you don't have, and then a con, and, um, then I know that's going to narrow it down. And I can usually talk to a small business specialist who will be delighted to answer a question that isn't, hi, what can you do? And can you award a contract to me? They're very excited to answer a more interesting question. Mauricio, is there um, a place that has an easy place that has an index of all these vehicles? Um, you know, I, 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 there probably is, I just don't know. There, there, exactly. exactly. There is. probably yeah. is, but I, I, your I don't know. Like I know what, you know, when I, I knew my agency has yeah. certain four there you numer go. numerical, yeah. uh, it was yeah. four numbers that it identified it as USAID. Yep. Um, so you know the ones in your agency. So similarly, right. a small business specialist is, is going to know right away. And the small business specialists get so many really boring questions that they'll be really excited to answer yours because that's much more interesting than the questions they usually get. Sound right, Mauricio? Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> I wouldn't say categorically, yes. They'll, they'll, All right. But, but that is something they should know and it should be yeah. easy for them to answer. They should. Yes. And so you can see whether or not the uh, whether or the extent of the, 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 that it was competed. And if it wasn't competed, why not? What were, what were the justification? Sorry, there we go. Um, what were the justifications, if any, that, the, that they used to make an award for other than full and open competition? You can see what those are. So you can say, well, gee, how is it that people are getting to, it's getting sole sourced? You can see that number of offers there are, and this gets really shocking. The number of contracts that are awarded with one or two offers. You've got the NAICS codes and the product service codes, but now because we searched on that description of requirements, see all the juicy stuff that's in here. The word cyber is in here, long, long descriptions of what's here. And so we can, we'll be able to see in a second, what are the NAICS codes that they are actually assigning to this? And then you have all the information about the competitor who won and what their set-asides were. And at the final end, you get to see how much was that transaction worth? How much have they spent on that contract so far? The, the first line is a great example. This is a 1.3 million dollar contract they've spent 16 million so far or so 15 million so far and they could spend 16 million so that's almost topping up but there's some more room to run on this contract other times there's just a single transaction so you can see what what's really happening with your buyers now there's an example that i want to share with you that shows what happens when you start to create pivot tables with this. Okay. And so I'm going to go through the really exciting and, and slightly scary um, process of doing a pivot table live. And this is scary for me because I don't do it all the time. All right. So I'm going to do this right along with you. <sighs> Oof. So hold my coffee. Here we go. So when you're doing, when you want to see, let's say I want to see a breakout by department and by agency and see where's the money really, who's spending the most money on my thing. So I'm going to highlight the whole sheet by, using, by um, clicking on the little triangle in the left-hand corner. And I'm gonna go insert. I'm gonna say, insert a pivot table. Where do you want? I want it, new worksheet in the same file. He says, all right, here you go. What do you wanna see? I said, well, there's a dialog box on the left-hand side. So let's say I wanna see the department. I wanna see the agency. See how it breaks out, real pretty. 
And then I want to see the dollars obligated. I want to see in this transaction. And let's say I want to see what's the total amount they could possibly spend through this contract. So there it is. And so now I can go through this manually and just it's um, and just see. All right. Because when you've, you're able to go and export, this is what your data looks like after you run it. And then when you export it, you're going to export it to CSV. It's going to look about like this. When you highlight the whole sheet and filter it, then that'll let you sort. And the, um, Aaron has provided a, a sample file in the chat that has a, the same file formatted for Excel. And then these are the pivot tables that I recommend. And there's a sample in the chat of a data file that has all of these pivot tables all created for you. You're able to, for example, pivot out which department, which agency, then which office and who are the contracting officers who are doing the most buying of what it is that you do? Does this seem useful? I would hope so. You're able to, again, filter out the people who are involved and then start to track down the people that you need to talk to. The data will let you answer then which agency is your best prospects. We talked a little bit about place of performance and how it isn't really necessarily 100% of the time going to tell you where the work gets done. What they'll tell you what they're looking for in description of requirements. The date about um, estimated time of completion gives you a sense of when to approach them. The contract vehicles tell you how we can make it easy for them to buy. And if you're not on that contract vehicle, then that may give you an idea of who you might want to team with. The field, how much the, the field, the number of offers can tell you how much competition to expect as well. Uh, just a second, I'm going to try to cancel out of this because I would so love to show this to you. And I'm so frustrated that this did not turn out the way I had hoped. So annoying. Hang on a second. Close it out. Close all windows here. Yep. Goodbye. And there we go. Uh, All righty. Um, I, have, I have for you something called a players and layers methodology sheet. And this, can, this has instructions and is a, a template that you can use to sort out. Once you've chosen an agency, you might have an opportunity that you're either tracking or you've created, and you can start to look at who do I know and who do I need to know. This is a methodology that is helpful when you want to try to uh, figure out who do you need to call on and what do you know about them and how well do you know them? And so that is among the files that I've asked Aaron to share. And if you wanna know how you work with all this stuff, I've also given you a sample business development workflow file. This is exactly the steps I take when I move from data to sort out priority agencies to sort out who do I want to talk to. Let's say I did that pivot table back here where I want to know who are my people that are spending all the money. Let's go find them. Let's talk to them about the contracts they've awarded, for example. And so how to do that is in the workflow document that I've asked Aaron to share with you. Um, and so I want to pause here with extreme gratitude for your patience with all the hiccups and I want to answer the questions that you have now. So please take me to task and take me to town and tell me how I can help you at this point. And any uh, aha or takeaway that you have that despite all of this stuff, what ended up being useful? I hope something. Thank you, Judy. Um, anyone have questions, comments for, for Judy? Um, Judy, for me, it it uh, was extremely helpful. Um, you know, I kind of hope that, you know, maybe you'll do this again at some point or 
we'll go through the the training. Uh, I, I definitely know I've got to go back through that training yeah. again. Yeah, um, I, I can't. This this is why I was asking that uh, that you have gone through ad hoc and 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 nose around. I will also tell you that um, if you um, my my friend Eileen can't do trains on this every day um, has a private half day and you can engage her to do that you, and you can email her or me um, Eileen Kent is her name you can find her on LinkedIn you can engage her for it. two people can do a half day and they'll do this hands on instead of being staggering all over the place you'll end up building a report or part of it and so you can email me and um, my contact information is coming up. I tell you more about that. That's a that's a paid service, and you can see why I don't do it, and she does. <laughs> okay. uh, you did a great job. Thank you. You're very kind. What other questions can I answer for you? I'll happily go back and um, live share stuff or whatever it is that um, that I possibly can, and I'll leave my contact information up. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, tell me what more I can um, I can answer for you. Hey, hey, Judy, this is Phil Wendling. How are you? Oh, Contra, how are you? <laughs> great. It was a great session, even though the technology was tough. Um, so my question to you is, it, well, it's really kind of an observation. I want to make sure that I'm tracking it right. So ultimately, at the end of the day, as as we as businesses are trying to prep for partners and 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 looking at opportunities going going after, that one section you're talking about in terms of looking at contracts that are going to come up within the next two years or one year gives us th that key component helps us understand who has a specific contract that may or may not be recompeting that and gives us enough running room to be able to try and get with them or find a, a competitor and so on and so forth. So uh, did I, I, I track that correctly, right? Yes, you did. Oh, That's awesome. so super valuable. Yeah. If you took away yeah. nothing else, I hope that that alone ended up being worth your while. Remember yeah. that all of these people, because you can look and see as well, anybody who's struggling with the question, do I need a GSA schedule? If that I if that uh, contract vehicle doesn't start with 47Q or GS, and they're using something else, then that tells you you don't need a GSA schedule to buy from that particular buyer. So you scoop all your data, you filter out, gee, I, well, I'm trying to do business with immigration and, and customs enforcement, then you're going to see what vehicles they do use and whether or not you need that GSA schedule. So can you hear me? I can. Hey, Judy, it's Cheryl Ford. How are you? Hi, Cheryl. Okay. Thank you for, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, but I still actually learned a lot, but I, I so do cool. have a question for yes. you. So for instance, uh, the new vehicle T4 in G2 for yeah. the, so uh -huh. there, we see a shift towards small businesses being forced to do J JVs. So when uh -huh. we look at the tool, is there a way as a small business when you know that the shift is towards strengthening you as a uh, small business to do joint vent, formal joint ventures and not just partnering? So you, do you see a different way of using the tool given that shift or that trend? The um, Yeah, you can see that a joint venture that is a legal entity and not just a subcontract or teaming arrangement, the name of the joint venture will show up. I was looking at this with a... Um, a client for whom CACI was one of their competitors and CACI dash da 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 they were there was a CACI dash the name of the joint venture and so all these joint ventures were listed so you could really see the um how they were showing up which was very cool does that answer your question a little bit it does I just uh, look forward to seeing if I could figure out from the documentation we'll get how yeah. to look at that to see what those steps are because I will tell you I play around in the tool but I am not able to do that on my own Okay, got it. And so well, it is a very um, important uh, activity that needs to, I need to do. It is. And it's also a great question to have. The more sophisticated your questions are for the small business specialist and the more research you've done, the more likely you're going to have a productive conversation with them as well. And so for sure in the T4NG um, arena, um, you'll want to take a look and see um, who's got the current, you can see who are the current contract holders, because probably those folks are likely to, uh, many of them are likely to want to re-up and compete for the next one. And you can see who's using that vehicle as well. And you can make friends long before that vehicle gets competed. Those big, huge vehicles tend to, competitions go on for a long time, a lot of protests, a lot of waiting around, and you can still make friends with folks mm -hmm. long before the new edition of the contract gets awarded. 
Well, that was my question. You answered it beautifully. I just look forward to seeing what type of uh, tool I can get to hone in on the uh, current contract orders that I know how to do, but yeah. to look at who has JVs, I don't know how to do that. Right. Uh, Mauricio, is, um, is there an easy way to find out what joint ventures exist if they haven't been awarded a contract? And I think that's what Cheryl's asking. Is that right? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that I, I don't know either. No, I, I, um, I don't know how easy it is. To if find the joint that, venture that, happened that, under mentor protege, yeah, then you can find that it, out. Then okay. you should be able to find out. And so that may be something that, um, the small business, the, um, if not the small business special, but the SBA district office where that company is would have had to process the, um, mentor protege application. None well, of this stuff of the, is easy. Yeah, no worries. The, 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 the targeted question is it's more of right now we're in T4NG2. So I would think that T4NG1, I could look at those joint ventures to see who did a JV mm -hmm. because like yep. you said, they're going to want to recompete. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more or of- they, Or they may at happened. any rate. So yeah, taking a look. Yeah. 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 So you you can certainly take a look at uh, contract awards under under T4NG and just see who's showing up. Who else has questions? Judy, I see a question in the yeah. chat um, about how do we dig down to credit card purchases and smaller ah, buys? I love that question. So something to keep in mind, I had to prep this for something else that I'm doing for the Society of American Military Engineers. I want everybody here to understand that micro purchase is not 100% the same. There's like a Venn diagram, okay? There's an overlap, but they're not 100% the same as government purchase card. A government purchase card can be the way a payment is made as a single transaction, which might be more or less, but could be considerably more than $10,000. But that in that one transaction could be part of a very big contract. Okay. Government purchase card is not the same as micro purchase. If you do a micro purchase, odds are good that you might get paid on a government purchase card. But government purchase cards can be used for very large transactions and very large transactions on very large contracts. It depends on the authority that the cardholder is given. Okay. So please do not spam people with the government who hold government purchase cards. A lot of the time I was talking to one of our other favorite uh, people in the federal arena, Anna Ehrman, who says, people, the government purchase card holder, they don't have a lot of say of anything. It's really the job nobody wants, and they're hoping nobody finds you. <laughs> so <laughs> this is just anecdotal. But um, so um, you can't, there is a field that says whether or not a government purchase card was used. But remember that just because it's showing up there as government purchase card was used, you also have to look at the contract vehicle. Okay. I was obviously off on a rant here. Did I answer your question? That came from Michael in the chat. So Michael Mullins. Um, not, not completely, Judy. It, really looking at um, how do we find those opportunities? We deal with additive manufactured parts, uh, uh -huh. and we're we're trying to find those opportunities. So. Um, Part of it, it goes back to understand who your buyer is first. So you want to see who buys a lot of what you do and then talk to the humans. And because you want to be, let's say you have a part that's hard to get or it's remanufactured or it's reverse engineered. And you know that say if somebody's buying a bunch of this particular thing, then they probably need some of what you do. Maybe we should talk to them. Okay. So Look at what the data shows on who's likely to buy what you do and then make friends. And that next contract, and this is so valuable for everybody here to realize the next contract you win might not show up on sam.gov anywhere. It's going to come from a conversation because you use the data to find out either who buys what we do, even if it's in larger quantities, or based on if somebody's buying this thing, then they probably need this other thing that we do. So look for what I call the shadow that the data casts that shows you who else might need what you do. Does that help a little bit more, Michael? I'm hoping so. Yeah, if you developed it with energy, now you need to do it with Navy and Air Force, yeah. 
I so appreciate your patience with something that I hope would go a whole lot more smoothly. And if it has just gotten you curious and is driving you back to talk to your um, your VIP community, your Apex Accelerator, previously known as PTAC, um, or just even you want to talk to me, I owe you at least that for um, as, as recompense for my where the technology went. Um, who else has questions? Yes, there's a replay, Courtney. Well, um, Judy, I see that we're at, we're at time, so yeah, yeah um, and uh, I do want to thank you for the. It was a lot of great information, and there were lots of good comments on the uh, in the chat. Um, you know, apologies, apologies for for the uh, technical difficulties, but you know those things happen, especially when we're trying to work with FPDS. They they do, and thank you for being so kind. Uh, Again, um, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, the very least I can do is to spend a little extra time if I didn't get to your question. Um, and it may be that we can do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one and I can show you the stuff that, uh, that I was staggering through. Mauricio, thank you. And Aaron, and also to, to Dorothy and to Barbara and the, the whole team at VIP. It's an honor to have the opportunity to do my best to serve. And I thank you so much for the chance to be in connection. Keep at it. The world needs you. You make a difference. You save lives. You help people deliver their missions and serve this nation and our citizens in the world. So keep at it. And well, it's been an honor and a pleasure today. Well, thank you, Judy. It's as you, we, the world needs you too. So we, we need you to stay at it. And, uh, and we really thank you for your time um, today. It was great information. Uh, and thank you to all the participants for attending the session and to the SBA for making this webinar possible. Um, so as a, as a reminder, uh, VIP is currently accepting applications for all five curriculums. Uh, and the next one that's coming up is VIP International at the end of March. Um, and we still have a couple slots open. So if you're interested, please uh, apply. Um, everything's on our website, uh, www.nationalvip.org. Um, and, and also, please join us for the final session of this series, uh, which is on Thursday, uh, this Thursday, February 23rd at 11 a.m. We're going to have Carlos Rivera of Bisnova Partners, uh, who's going to present information uh, on developing a pipeline. So, uh, Judy, thank you again for your time and, uh, and all the great information. Everyone, please feel free to reach out, back out to Judy for additional information. Uh, have a great rest of your week, everyone, uh, and see you soon. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Judy.